If you'd like to find out where I'm halfway to or where I'm halfway from, don't go away. Hello, it's Frank again, out in which you all do away. Imagination is fun when it's free to run. Come on, we paint as a friend today. Simply paint with a friend today. Welcome everyone once again to Simply Painting. We're near a place called Rangeley, which is in Maine in America. And I'm actually on a spot called the Height of Land, which is very obvious because it's way up in the sky, isn't it? And the other funny thing about here is that I'm actually 3,107 miles from the North Pole. Although at the moment it actually feels I'm a little closer. But the funny thing is that I'm also 3,107 miles from the equator. So there we are. Anyway, the scenery behind me, while it's beautiful where all these lakes are, where the rivers all meet and flow into these lakes, I thought we'd go and find somewhere to paint that was a little, maybe a little warmer, maybe a little more shaded, and a little more to our liking. So why don't we do that? So come on and join me. Well, I did say we'd find somewhere to paint. I think I've got a perfect scene for us. Behind, we've got a lake, we've got some mountains, the old letter M, simply painting style, you see. We've got both sides framed, a nice tree on one side, a little bunch of trees on the other. This is the one for us. Why don't we head back to the studio and let's paint this wonderful picture together. Let's go. Now, where is that? Hello there, I've got it. Raw sienna and the cup of tea. Mm. Let's head over here, have a little chat, tell you about the materials we're going to need and then have a look at the picture. But first, the materials. This time we've got six watercolours and they are Payne's Grey, Lemon Yellow, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, Alizarin Crimson and Raw Sienna. We've got our little thing of white gouache here which we might need but I doubt it. The other two colours we don't need for sure. So we put them away. We now have the three brushes, which is the large goat hair, the baby goat hair, and the number three rigger. We have the tray to put our paints out on, which is called our palette. We've got the water, the cloths, and last of all, we have our sheet of paper, which is 14 by 10. That's that line in there. You see, I leave myself a little bit to doodle with, and it's longwise, therefore it's a landscape of painting. Anyway, let's look at what we did. And there it is. I was very pleased with this. I, I thought those lovely colours, those colours, they blend so beautifully. So let's get at it. First of all, horizon, sky, middle and foreground, or as we say in Simply Painting, have some more fun. Hmm. Let's get the old straight edge and draw a line. DD, find a pencil now. There we go. And then right across like that. And that's it. Now that represents a line which is just on the shoreline on the far side of the lake. That's what that is. Right? Good. Next, let's put out the paint. So let's get ready here. Oh, dee 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 dee. You always love to get at these things, they're great, aren't they? Yes, and dee dee. Some of the ultramarine blue. Some of the raw sienna. Let's put that over in this corner here. Beside that, we'll put some of the alizarin crimson up here. Keep them around the side of the palette. You know why you do that? To give yourself room to mix the paint. You're dead right. Do you know I can't get this top back on? Isn't that terrible? Ah, there it is. Always put the top back on. See if you're standing on it or leaning on it or something. There we are, lemon yellow. We've got the burnt umber. I want them down there. And the last one, we put it down in this corner here, Payne's Grey. Darkest colour in our palette. We have a total of eight, as you probably know. I'll tell you about them later and why. So let's look back and see the sky. Now the sky this time is a pinky colour. It's a lovely. So let's create that. First of all, get the brush, stick it in the water. Give it a good swish around, yeah. Fill it up with some water. And then into the raw sienna. And let's put a light wash of raw sienna. Starting from the top of the page, working right down. The reason we start from the top, of course, is, I know, I've said it before, but it's Newton's law helps you, you see. It allows you to go right across and the water runs down the page and so does the paint with it so I mean you wouldn't start you wouldn't start painting the kitchen door from the bottom up would you <laughs> maybe you would I don't know but well you're not supposed to <laughs> let me tell you that it's a good idea though if the wife says to you let's paint the garage door or something make a mess of it 
She never asked you again. That's what I did. Peg asked me to paint it once, so I did it wrong. With little difficulty, I might say, because I'm not a good door painter the best of times. I've taken some of the blue, which is the ultramarine blue, and I'm taking some of the red, which is the alizarin crimson, mixing the two of those together. Now remember, we've got this two minute job for the sky. So we don't want to take too much time with this. Now the sky this time seems to be going a bit that way. It's kind of on a sideways. It gives a kind of an impression that it's swishing over the mountains. Huh? There we are. Little, see it's that way. Obviously the sky going across, but it looks, looks kind of sideways at times. And that's all I'm doing. It's very little, it's just, and now that's a mixture of the raw sienna with the uh, alizarin crimson and the blue. And I, I think we've nearly got enough in there. Maybe it's a little more purpley than the one we're painting from, but I rather like that, so let's stick with it. nice and dry now. Now sometimes you'll find that when you reproduce a picture like this from a sketch or whatever, or from a photograph of yours of course, nobody else's, yes, uh, that uh, it'll be different. Well don't fight it. It oftentimes is better. <laughs> Just thought I'd mention that to you on the way because I've often painted something and then the second time I do it I'd find that uh, I was happier with it. Yeah. Now I'm just mixing up some of the blue, which is the ultramarine, the alizarin crimson, and some of the raw sienna, and I'm making a colour which is very similar to the sky. Now take your time with this. I know it's, I know it's boring, and you say, ah, look at it, and impatience gets the better of us, and we dive onto the page, with, and then of course we ruin it, and we wonder why then we haven't got the right colour. So I keep going till I think I got it right, and then maybe head for my little piece of doodling paper, which I should suggest you always have, ah, that's not bad, always have this on the side of your, on the side of your table like that, and you can test out your brush before you put it on the paper. Now, up we go, oh, yeah, it's, a big, it's a big mountain though, I don't know what the name of that mountain was, but it was quite large, wasn't it? And then it kind of dinked there, and then it went like that again, and then we filled the whole thing in. That's pretty well it. Right down, again, I haven't come quite to the horizon line, but very close. Now, a tip for you when painting mountains. Quickly, make your mind up and do it. That's it. There we go, we got it nice and dry again. Now, that is very important, by the way. When you make your mind up, Go for it, as they say. I'm changing now to the baby brush. Baby goat hair, and I'm gonna mix up some color. Now we're into this middle ground here. And we take some of the raw sienna and some of the alizarin crimson, mix the two of those together with a tiny bit of the yellow. Hmm. And we'll test this in a minute and see. Maybe we might need the tiniest bit of blue in it. I'm not sure. Let's, let's have a look, see. That's yeah, not bad, is it? Okay, off we go. Starting up, create these little bushes. See them? Now, I'm not too bothered about what I paint here because I've got to cover that anyway, so no sense in wasting paint, you see. Hmm. Well, these autumn colours, they, 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 they are just magnificent. They only happen for, I don't know, two or three weeks maybe, that's all. And they have tours that go around Maine, yeah, and busloads of people flying around the place, you know, 80 mile an hour, an hour kind of bus rides round Maine to see the, the autumn colours. Now that's a bit dark, uh, but they are really beautiful. Unfortunately this year they were a bit late, so some of the buses missed it, I think. <laughs> they had to drive even faster to catch up with them, but it was, it's a lovely sight. The reds and the oranges and the yellows, oh my goodness. Now that's not so bad, so we're coming down here a bit there. 
Now that's right across there. See that now? And I needn't bother again too much with here because of course the same thing applies to the to here as on the other side because we're going to put something there and put something there. So why do we want to be wasting our valuable paint? Now right along the riverbank now we're just going, look. This was a, it wasn't a river, it was a lake, it wasn't quite a big lake too. My, my, I'm telling you though, it was cold up on top of that height of land. I don't care if it was 3,000, whatever it is, miles from wherever. Now, who went to the trouble of bothering about that, actually? When you think of it, that somebody actually walked or paced or got a measuring tape. It must have been a hell of a long measuring tape, must have. Been. Imagine if, he, if, uh, if it was only two yards long. He'd been forever trying to measure it all the way from the North Pole and from the equator and everything. Oh, I suppose they've got modern ways of doing it now, but I think when that was done, they didn't have. Now, look, I've just put in the... Now, you can see I've just tipped it out ever so lightly with some burnt umber, and it gives us the effect, if we close our eyes a bit, that you've got a nice river bank. Now, coming to the left of that now, there's a, there's a little stand of trees. Do you see them? And they're somewhat greener. So, of course, I've got to make up some, a somewhat greener colour. Now, that's done with yellow, some of the blue, and a little bit of the raw sienna. Now, once again, it is not all that strong just yet. See it there? Now, I'm going to come down a little bit there. I'm going to make the... That's where I'm coming down to. See it there now? And then a little bit in there, and then up we go again. See there? That's the, the other piece. So you're kind of building it from the back up. Great fun painting these things. Once you remember to work from the back forward, that's where we all go wrong with these watercolours. And then we wonder, you know, how, how is it I can't do this? Well, you can. This is the baby brush, by the way, the corner. But once you remember that you start the furthest point away from you and you work towards you, that's all you have to do. I'm going to put a little bit, a little, little tiny little taste of land coming out there. See it? Yeah. And then I'm going to do the same with it that I did in the other river bank. I'm just going to just outline it ever so lightly. I want to get rid of that horizon line there. I don't want that interfering with my... Now that looks quite nice, doesn't it? Maybe just a slightly darker bit on top. This is so easy. And so is painting. I'm sure there are people there at the moment watching me saying, you know, this is very easy. This fellow makes it look awful easy. But you know, the truth of the matter is that it is easy. <laughs> That's the fact of them. It is actually easy. But very few of us are prepared to admit it as artists that maybe it's not the most difficult thing on this earth that we do. Because, of course, uh, we have to make a living as well, don't we? I'll give that a little dry. There we go. Now I've got to do the same thing with the water as I did with the sky. I've got to make up some nice water. But uh, as I was saying, uh, you know, can you imagine, uh, up to very recently, you see, the only real form of art was, was professional art. We were paid to do it. And the more money you could get, the better, of course. And the more mystique you had, and the more difficult it, it appeared, the more we could charge. I'm trying to make up the same colour as we have there. That's all I'm doing. I'm using the big brush and I'm creating a nice big pond of it because there's a lot of water to put in there and we want to be sure of getting the whole thing done in, in one swift swipe, so to speak. Now, lay the brush flat on the paper and off you go. And underneath that again. That's it. That's enough. That's done the thing now. Now, there's a little ridge there. I like that. Leave it there. Don't start to perfect the water. It's not... Water is not a perfectly flat surface. Now, isn't that nice? Now, and you also have noticed that I've left a piece of white there. There was a reason for it. Yes, that's to create that nice bit of light in the, in the middle of the picture. See, that's attract your attention, doesn't it? Now, over to the right hand side, have another look at the picture we're painting from and you'll see that about here somewhere, quite low down on the, we have this other jetty of land which comes out to about 
there, doesn't it? That's about it. That's all. That's our horizon line now, isn't it? It's parallel with the other one. Now we can get at it. Let's go for the big brush on this one. See, we switch between the two. Don't get into the habit of using the small one too much. You'll become attached to it, as they say. Now I'm taking some of the red and some of the yellow, making up a nice kind of a whiny colour. So I'll add a little bit of the raw sienna. That is a mixture of alizarin crimson, lemon yellow, and some of the raw sienna. And then, with the big brush, let's go. Mm, look at that. There's a lovely colour there. And there was another one there, wasn't there? I'm leaving gaps, because I'm going to put in some green here as well, haven't I? Look at that. That's a smashing colour. These, you know, people would not believe that you'd get colours like this, but you actually do. Some of them are red as could be. I know when I went home first, the first time I went to Maine, I came home here, and I painted some of these things, and I went down to the local gallery with them, and I handed them in, and the man said to me, is there something wrong with you, Frank Clark? Where on earth did you ever find trees that colour? I said, that's the colour they are. And lucky enough, I had some photographs with me, and I convinced them. So, now I'm taking some of the Payne's Grey, mixing it with the yellow. That gives me a nice green. Wait till you see. Look at that. Nice vibrant green. And this goes in between all these things, you see. I've got to... Now I'm still up in the air a little bit above that, but don't worry. See the way it's all forming a little formation now for me. Now I'm taking slightly darker as we get down towards the bottom. Because it's darker in here. You see, this is in the... In around the corner, as the fellow says, you hoo yeah. Now I think we're going to put a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a bank sticking out there. See, that's just, a, just sticking out in the lake like that. Now it's very really flat looking, isn't it, at the moment? Watch me transform that. Hmm. The old nail. One, two, three, four, five. Not too many now. And all of a sudden, we've got trees all over the place, haven't we? That one there is a bit low. Yeah, I'll fix that. Let's get the small brush now and just give a little dabby dab dab, and that'll bring them up a little bit. Now, the next thing is we've got to repeat this down here because, of course, there's reflections, isn't there? I'm going to go a little darker on one of those trees as well. I think, uh, would you feel that they're a little bit, a little bit dark, a little bit of darkness there? There you go. Now, let's repeat it. Now, believe it or not, when you paint a shadow in the water, it usually is darker. So we put in there and we pull down, right? And we pull down and we pull. This is the, the first bit here. Now the, the shadow is exactly what it's called. It's a shadow and therefore it's a reflection of what's above it. So now we've got to put in some red in here as well. So Because there was red, wasn't there? And there was some red there. See it? There's a big piece here, isn't there? This is great fun. If you take your time with this, it's so much fun, honestly. And you don't have to paint it as big a picture as this. You can make it smaller if you like. Do a whole lot of little ones, yeah. Great, great way to get going with painting is do what I did. First year I started to paint, I gave everybody, everybody I knew a picture. Yeah, so, now I have to say they weren't the, <laughs> probably, they were one of the best pictures that were ever painted in this earth, and they were quite small, but I enjoyed it. And lo and behold, you know, people love to get something like that from you. It's so much different than the old postcard that somebody else already wrote the note and everything. And it's, this is your own piece of work. It's, it's yours. It's something. And to send to your friends overseas, isn't it lovely to get a picture from your mother or your father, whoever it is? So there you go. Off you go and do it. Don't be afraid of it. Now I'm just going to have to put in some, look, repeat these things down this way a bit. There's one there, there's one there, there's a squiggly fella there, there's one there, there's a fella going out that way. And that's near enough, I've got a reflection, haven't I? Yeah. Get to the other side now. The big fella. This is a big bush, and this bush actually is on the land. It's actually, if you look at the left hand side there, you'll see that it's actually here. We're standing there. Mm. So now I think we're going to need some more paint. It uses a lot of paint a picture like this because, of course, the colours are very vibrant. They're thick. You can't, you can't, uh, don't use them. Don't use them with a lot of water. Now, let's see what we got there. Ah, look at that. See, you probably thought, oh, this is going to take ages. <laughs> Not at all. Not on your Nelly, he says. 
But it needs to be a strong one, that, because do you know why? Otherwise, if you make it lighter than that, it won't recede. This piece of land here must look further away, which it is, of course, so you paint it fainter. And that is even fainter still. Do you understand how you layer it back? You know, it's dead easy when you know how. I spent so much time trying to figure this all out, and I promise you, I, you now have the ability to take all these shortcuts, which I made the mistakes on, and I made plenty. Believe me, there's not a mistake you could ever make that I didn't already make. Anyway, Maine is beautiful, and we're going to go there again. Hey, and the food. Oh, they, they do a thing there called, uh, a little piece of meat it's called, uh, it's called ribeye steak, apart from the lobsters and all that. Well, honest to goodness, if you saw the size of the thing, we stayed in a, I don't know what it was, kind of like the outbacks, you know, the, very nice. And uh, it's about 40 miles up a dirt road, yeah. And uh, we went, this way we went moose hunting, yeah. Now when I say moose hunting, with a camera of course, Anyway, I'm now getting some burnt umber, some raw sienna, and with a large brush, I'm creating rushes. Do you see them? The brush nearly has to be dry, otherwise you won't get the effect. And I'm coming right across to this tree here. Yeah? Now, it wants to be very dry, otherwise, as I said, the brush won't split properly, and if it doesn't split properly, you won't get that nice effect. Hey, that's not bad, is it? Look at that. I'm coming along here nicely, am I? Anyway, these, these ribeye things. Well, I got a piece of meat on my plate, and I have to tell you that it was hanging over both sides of the plate. I mean, I thought there was a, I said, this is for the group. Uh, good job we had, we have a gentleman called Steve, who he can eat. If his claim to fame is one thing in this world, if there's a world championship eating contest, we're gonna enter Steve, and he'd win. Anyway. We ate this, it was just wonderful meat. Apparently they cook it all day or something, but there you are. So when you get to Maine to see these lovely colors, go and ask about ribeye. Hmm. Now, now I've got the, the baby brush out now to give it a chance. I'm just gonna put a few little, look, it's a kind of little flicks of the brush, see it? These are little things sticking up. Little reeds and things. Now, the brush at the moment, because I didn't clean it since the last time, has got quite stiff. So I'm going to look, just rub it together in your hands like that. Then clean your hands, of course. And that will soften, rather than sticking it in and out of the wall, that'll soften up the, the hair. And now you're away. Watch now. Now I can create these little fine pieces of grass. See, and, and on top of them, put a couple of little dabbers like that, because they're little, little pieces of seed and that sticking up, see them? Now, next, here we go. We're gonna put the tree in now. Now there was, a, there was a trunk on this tree, and as well as that, there was some, now here and there, there was a couple of branches come out of it, yeah. Rather than scratching them out, which I nailed this time, we're just gonna, see that? Because I'm gonna put a couple more. Now, now, I'm just going to get the brush, some nice lemon yellow and the red. Mix the two together. Let's see how does that. Oh, that's a bit strong. Get some more of the. Uh, I'm going to keep it nice and light. And then just put them on there. See? It's like stippling on, isn't it? Yeah, I did say that to you before in one pro. That's all it is. Except I'm stippling them on, but it creates a nice kind of broken effect. Okay. Now it's back to the big brush again. This whole thing has come together rather well, isn't it? About one in every ten pictures you paint actually look good. The others can look awful, <laughs> but that's the way it is. You don't always uh, you don't always succeed. They look okay. I mean, they're, they're fine to send to your auntie, your uncle, maybe even sell, but you wouldn't be happy with them. Now the little bird. There he goes, and then the pen, and we sign the name up here. And then we have to tell you that that's all for this program. I just put the little mount on and you'll see what it looks like. I think this should be quite a nice one. And say to you from Frank Clark, as we say in Ireland once again, Shlonath, till we meet again, you try this out and you too could have some more fun. For more information, visit our website at www.simplypainting.com. 
Sloan lot to you, my friends, on till we meet again somewhere. Send a card or two, I'll be thinking of you, and I'll be hoping we'll be back real soon. But on till then, let me say, my friends, the pleasure was all the way. And the parts in your mind are not hard to find, so we can do it again one day. I simply paint them with Frank today. <laughs> <laughs>